Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. So for a little over a month now, I've had the Hasselblad X-Pan in my possession. I am currently borrowing this from Phil Stebley, who owns the Darkroom, and I've been trying it out for the very first time. I have always wanted to shoot with one of these, and years ago I thought about buying one, and I kind of wish I did because the price has just gone up and up and up every single year. And uh, whenever Phil offered to let me take this home with me and try it out for a while, I jumped at the chance because a lot of people have asked for like a video or a review on this camera here on this channel, and I've just never really had the opportunity to. So for about a month now, I've been shooting with it and I've put a handful of rolls through it. And I'm not gonna do a full review today because I'm gonna spend some more time with this. And actually, this is the uh, 45 millimeter F4, but Phil has the other two lenses, the, I believe it's a 30 millimeter and a 90 millimeter, and he's gonna send those over as well, so I'm excited to try those out. But what I thought I would do is just kinda share some of my initial impressions of using the camera and as well share some of the photos that I've made so far. If you're unfamiliar with the X-Pan, this is a 35 millimeter rangefinder that can also shoot panoramic photos. So you can actually switch between standard 35 millimeter frame size and panoramic anytime you want. This was something I didn't know until I actually picked up the camera. You can switch that mid-roll, so you don't have to shoot an entire roll of standard frames or an entire roll of panoramic. You can switch back and forth between the two anytime you want, which is pretty convenient, actually. It's a fully electronic camera, so you don't have any kind of mechanical film advance or film rewind or anything like that. It's all relying on batteries, so some people might think that's a good thing or a bad thing. That's really just sort of a personal preference kind of thing, but it is all electronic. It does have an internal light meter, which is what I've been using to expose all the film I've shot with it so far, and it seems to be pretty accurate. Um, it seems like a pretty center-weighted kind of meter because as I'm looking through the viewfinder, if I move the center just ever so slightly, it can, you know, affect the reading there. So um, it does seem accurate, though. Uh, you do also have some automation here. It is a rangefinder, so it's only manual focus, unlike, you know, some of the contacts cameras that are technically rangefinders, but they have autofocus. Uh, this is manual focus only. But with this camera, you do have things like aperture priority. So if you set your shutter speed to A, that's going to basically choose the shutter speed for you based on what your aperture is set to. And you also have single shot, continuous shot, which I've never shot continuous uh, panoramic photos. I don't know if there's really a use for that, but again, you can switch it over to a regular frame size. And you also have a self timer here as well. Uh, exposure compensation plus or minus two stops. Your film speed, you can select on the front of the camera here, or you can set it to DX. And if your film canister is DX coded, it's gonna read that and automatically choose the uh, film speed for you. In terms of the shooting experience though, this camera is awesome. Uh, definitely feels like it's a tank. I mean, it's a really solid, dense feeling camera. Uh, it's a little bit wider than most 35 millimeter rangefinders are, but that's sort of to be expected considering it's a panoramic camera, but it's still manageable for sure. I've just carried it on me, you know, while I'm out and about for the day and it doesn't really make a difference compared to other 35 cameras. If you're shooting with the same focal length or aspect ratio over and over, you can get really comfortable with it and kind of know where you need to be whenever you see something that you want to shoot because you're so used to basically that distance and that aspect ratio. Whereas this camera has just completely thrown me uh, for a loop and I will see something and I'll go to shoot it and I think I have no idea where I need to stand for this right now. Uh, it's definitely been fun, but it's been challenging for sure. And I think that to me has been the most interesting aspect of it is just trying to figure out how to see with this kind of aspect ratio. Uh, some scenes definitely work better than others and just trying to figure out where this camera fits in. Uh, that to me has been the most fun challenge, I think. Actually might get closer. Fill, fill that in. I don't know. It's so tough. I don't know if that's gonna work. I don't think so. Try something different. I've always just seen cameras as tools, and especially with film photography, that's what I love about it so much, is the variety of tools. And you have so many different looks that you can get with different film formats and different cameras and how they operate. They just make you see differently and approach things differently. And this is definitely one of the most unique kind of ways to shoot, for sure. Um, it's just been interesting trying to figure out where it fits in. So I've shot a handful of rolls, everything from C41 to E6 to black and white, and I've got some of my photos here that I wanna share, but before we do that, I wanna take a minute to pay some bills and thank our sponsor today, which is Squarespace. 
I've personally been using Squarespace for my own website and I've been recommending it to people for years long before they ever actually became a sponsor of the channel because their service is that good. They have tons of templates to choose from that all look great and it's extremely easy to use, but even if you do run into an issue, they have award-winning 24-7 customer service that's always willing to help. If you'd like to try a free trial of Squarespace, you can do so at squarespace.com, but if you want to get signed up, I can save you 10% off your first purchase if you sign up at squarespace.com slash mattday. So I've got a bunch of photos here on my phone and I'm just gonna walk through these and kind of give you a little bit of context as to what I was doing, what film I was shooting, and whether or not it actually turned out how I was wanting it to. First few photos here are black and white. These are all Lamography's Berlin 400 film. And the first photo is a couple of our dogs, Taker and Rusi. They were just in the backyard and I was trying to work with just negative space in a frame where there was just nothing there and just seeing what it's like trying to balance things out in a frame like this, that wide. And uh, I just like them being dead center in the frame and uh, kind of overlapping one another and looking in opposite directions. It's not a photo that I would print or anything, but um, it was just a fun little exercise. Another one here in the backyard, this hammock, I was just looking at all of the lines and the curve of everything, and this just did not translate the way that I wanted it to. Um, I think if I had a wider lens on there, it would probably be a little bit more fun, but it's just kind of nothing, and it didn't really translate as well. With a rangefinder, sometimes if you're not looking through the lens, it's hard to know exactly how it's going to translate, and uh, just wasn't happy with this one. This is a photo inside of the Fort Collective. This is where Roast Coffee is going to be moving to and also where my new office space is going to be. And it's not a photo that I'm like particularly excited about. I just wanted to show the photo here because I'm really excited for that space to be open. I shot this photo here inside of Rivers Bend, our local bike shop, and the light in there in the mornings is amazing with all the shadows of the bikes and the spokes and the tires and everything. Um, it's just always a lot of fun to watch the light move around in there. These next photos are all just photos from a little walk around my mom's neighborhood, and these are all on Portra 160. Uh, shooting up close with my family is interesting because I'm really, really close to them, but they're taking up such a small portion of the frame. So it's just been really kind of interesting to see where that works and where it doesn't. This first photo here is a photo of my mom and our daughter, Nora. Uh, she was just picking her up, and I was probably close to the minimum focus distance here, and you can see just how much frame there is. So it's just, it's really interesting. Uh, this little photo of Elliot here, I really love this one, the line from the road and everything leading to him. Uh, really liked this one actually. It was one of them that I felt worked more than others. This little shadow photo of me, Molly, and both of the kids with us. Uh, I gotta sneak myself into these photos as much as I can. That way the kids know I was there. This photo here, I really just like the light that was hitting the back of the stop sign, but I wanted to share this photo because you can see how heavy this lens vignettes. A lot of people will use a filter on these X-Pan lenses that has basically a neutral density filter right in the middle, so that way it darkens the middle of the frame, and that way it kind of balances out some of the vignette. It's definitely more noticeable in shots like this where you have blue sky in the corners. Some photos of the kids running around. It's just interesting trying to shoot with a frame like this. I'm always driving around back roads around our neighborhood and shooting photos like this off the side of the road. This is my portrait of Ohio, because if you drive around here, this is what it looks like everywhere. I also took the camera on a little uh, sunrise hike. I went on with one of my good friends out in the woods, and I was trying to just look for spots where the light was coming through as it was coming up that morning, and uh, it was definitely tough to shoot with, not only because it was so dark at the time, I was shooting all of these at, you know, four to eight seconds, but um, it was just interesting trying to compose such a wide frame where there's so much going on in the woods. And finally, we've got some ectochrome, which is actually the very first roll that I put through the camera. You might recognize that pool table there from a recent video I did on Cinesteel 50D. I went back the next day and shot this one. Really like this photo of Water Street downtown at sunset. Um, I think ectochrome was probably the perfect choice for this shot. It just worked really well with the color of all the buildings. So those have been my first impressions and some of my first photos here with the X-Pan over the last month or so. Um, again, I'm going to do a more in-depth review of the camera and uh, talk about other lenses as well and probably go over some of this stuff again. But uh, I'm excited to shoot more with this thing, especially as we get into fall. I'm hoping to get some good fall color and... Uh, Again, just try to figure out where this camera fits in. So if you guys have any thoughts or questions about the camera or the photos themselves, definitely leave those down below in the comments. So that's it for today. So I want to thank you guys for everything. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.